Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with another mail call. This one is a early Bronze Age key that I'm very excited to share with you. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Paul Kosnick. I have a little over 40 years experience collecting comic books, investing, personal finance, and comic book conservation. And what I do on the channel is share some of that knowledge and experience with you all. And I love opening up books like this. Look at that. Beautiful. Well, what is it and why do we care? Obviously, this is Marvel Premiere number one. It's in CGC 8.0 with white pages. This is the first appearance of Adam Warlock and the first appearance of the Soul Gem, one of the six Infinity Stones that Thanos assembled into the Infinity Gauntlet. It's written by one of my favorite Bronze Age writers, Roy Thomas, and illustrated by one of my favorite cover artists of the Silver and Bronze Age, Gil Kane. It features this great Gil Kane cover and has many of the hallmarks of a blue chip collectible. Adam Warlock is coming to the MCU in a big way in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. He was teased by Aisha in the post credit scene to Guardians Volume 2, and we've seen Will Poulter as Adam Warlock in the trailer to Guardians Volume 3. We even caught a glimpse of him in his hibernation cocoon in Thor The Dark World's post credit scene in the collector's pad. For those not familiar, in the comics, the character that becomes Adam Warlock is genetically engineered to be a perfect human by a group of evil scientists named the Enclave in Fantastic Four issues 66 and 67 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby during the height of the Silver Age in 1967. In these two issues, they introduce the character and tell his origin story, but at the time, he's known only as him. Being a perfect human, he obviously chooses not to serve the Enclave. We only see him after emergence from the cocoon in a few panels, but in those few panels, he destroys his evil creators and departs Earth for the stars. He has awesome but unspecified powers that include energy manipulation, the power of flight, and durability enabling him to survive the rigors of space. We next see him, as he's called, in a two-issue story arc in Thor number 165 and 166 from June and July of 1969. In these issues, we learn that after exploring space, he decides he needs some more time incubating and re-enters his cocoon form. Upon emerging, he's lonely and he seeks a worthy mate. He finds the Lady Sif pleasing to the eye and abducts her naturally, which brings him into conflict with Thor. The two battle toe to toe for some time, him holding back his most awesome mind control powers so that he and Thor could battle mano a mano with only their fists and their wits for the lovely Sif. Ultimately, Thor overcomes him, but only because the warrior madness overtook Thor, something that brings Thor great shame, as Sif points out that him only sought her out from innocence and had no evil intent. Thus defeated, him retreats again to space and hibernation in his cocoon. These four Silver Age appearances, all written by Stan Lee and illustrated by Jack Kirby, are entertaining and they're a great foundation for the character. But at that point, he is not known as Adam Warlock, he doesn't possess the Soul Gem. In fact, none of the Infinity Stones had made their first appearances yet in the comic books. We have to fast forward to 1972 for him's next appearance, which is in this book, Marvel Premiere Number 1, which incidentally is where he takes on the name Adam Warlock and we see he comes into possession of the Soul Gem. It starts off with the High Evolutionary, now immortal and nearly as powerful as a cosmic being despite his humble beginning as a human on Earth, planning to create a counter-Earth on the opposite side of the sun 
and recreating all of the life on Earth on his counter-Earth, but without man's flaws, so that counter-Earth will be a paradise. We get a great summary and flashback of Thor number 134, the High Evolutionary's first appearance, and the High Evolutionary finds Him's cocoon and brings it aboard his spaceship, which is disguised as an asteroid. Him has further evolved and recounts his origin and battle with Thor through mental projection while chilling in his cocoon. The High Evolutionary likewise shares his plans of creation with him, and they really hit it off as kindred spirits. The High Evolutionary feels immediately kind of paternal because him, although a very powerful being, is still very kind of naive and doesn't have a lot of experience. At this point, the High Evolutionary's greatest failure, the Man Beast, arrives to spoil Daddy's plans of creation for Counter Earth. He and his minions overcome the High Evolutionary through treachery, and him, from his cocoon, sensing that his new pal needs saving, emerges and defeats the Man Beast and his minions. Man Beast escapes, however, with his brothers, and they flee to Counter Earth to corrupt man and destroy the utopia the High Evolutionary sought to create. The High Evolutionary decides to destroy Counter-Earth in response rather than have it be corrupted, but him convinces the High Evolutionary to let him go there to battle the Man-Beast and attempt to protect the inhabitants of Counter-Earth from the Man-Beast's evil influence. This really touches the High Evolutionary, who sheds a tear in appreciation, but also for the sense of loss of what could have been a relationship with him as the High Evolutionary has other places to be. The High Evolutionary accepts Him's proposal, and as a boon, the High Evolutionary provides Him with an emerald of which you shall learn more, and names him Warlock. From there, Adam has one more adventure in Marvel Premiere issue number two, before going on to his own series that ran 15 issues, from August of 1972 until November of 1976. The first eight issues wrap up the Counter-Earth story arc, and the book goes on hiatus in July of 1973. It's relaunched two years later by Jim Starlin in October 1975 and is the title he uses to introduce the in-betweener and continue to unfold the Thanos drama. It features the first meeting of Adam Warlock and Thanos in issue number nine, it also features the first cover appearance of both Pip the Troll in issue number 12 from April of 1976 and of Gamora in issue number 15, the final issue from November of 1976. If you are speculating on Adam Warlock, this is the book I recommend. His MCU incarnation is skipping the original him origin he emerges fully developed from the cocoon as Adam Warlock, and this is the issue in which that happens in the comics. We also know from the Guardians Volume 3 trailer that he possesses the Soul Stone, and this is both the first appearance of the Soul Stone in comics and the issue in which Adam comes to possess it. It's got a great Gil Kane cover with plenty of eye appeal slabbed and is an early Bronze Age number one to boot. For those reasons, I think this is your best long-term investment in Adam Warlock, which is why I sought this copy out. Marvel Premiere No. 1 is not a rare book. There are over 2,600 universal copies in the CGC census, and the median grade is a relatively high 8.0, the grade of this example here. Because it's a book with plenty of copies in the marketplace and changes hands frequently, it's fairly straightforward to determine fair market value. The bear market in all asset classes has certainly affected Marvel Premiere No. 1 as it has most comic books. An 8.0 copy has all-time record sales of $800, a mark hit several times during the pandemic. But current fair market value is only $300, with several recent sales coming in below $300. This book in this grade has completely returned to pre-pandemic prices, the last time you could get this book consistently for under 300 bucks was at the very end of 2020. Many of our fellow collectors are concerned that the bottom is yet to fall out of the comic book market and that there will be lower prices yet to come. 
Some are even selling here, having endured as much pain as they can handle. Me? I'm buying, obviously. I'm not trying to call a bottom. If you've been listening to my channel, you know that's not generally something I think you can consistently do. But I am saying we should be net buyers here and not net sellers. As the Oracle of Omaha once stated, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy only when others are fearful. When the market was at all time highs and many people were publicly stating that many key comic books could only go up from here or are only going higher, I was very skeptical. Now, some of those same folks are telling you to sell because a recession is coming. Effectively, this advice amounts to buy high, sell low, which is not an effective long-term strategy. I'm advising you to stay calm. If you have anxiety about your comic book values returning to pre-pandemic levels, put it in perspective. Maybe just open up a comic book and read it. Remember why you're involved in the hobby in the first place and why collecting comic books brings you joy. The comic book bear market will end. The comic book market will recover, especially the market in key books that folks will always desire. Hunt for some books that either you couldn't afford before, but now you can, or if you don't have a lot of capital on hand, hunt some minor keys that used to be 20 to 60 bucks but now can be had for under $20. Or just go hit the dollar bins and find some fun books to read. In the current economy, some vendors have even brought the 50 cent bins back. So there's a price point for anyone to enjoy this hobby. In short, go back to what it was that made you enjoy comic book collecting in the first place. And just don't worry about the market if it's giving you anxiety. That's what I'm doing, and I'm finding great deals on keys that I'm sharing with the channel. That is why I was thrilled to be the winning bidder on this book for $295. I've got a very good entry point on this book at pre-pandemic pricing and lots of speculation potential for the MCU incoming. Being the median grade for this book with plenty of supply and already slab, this book has good liquidity and can be moved on to another home without a long wait or excessive trading fees if I decide to sell. I do own already a high grade raw copy of this book. And in the coming months, if we see some appreciation, I can either flip this book, sell my raw book, or sub my raw book to CGC and sell whichever one of them I desire to offset the cost of the other. This is a way you can build a nice collection for very little cost. And it's something I do regularly. Sometimes I'm even able to pay nothing at all other than sweat equity for a book when I play the game well and the market goes my way. Time will tell on this one. I hope you enjoyed this video on this sweet Adam Warlock key. It's the book I'm recommending to anyone who wants to get in on Adam Warlock for either short or long-term investing. What deals are you finding today? I want to hear about them. Is there another book for Adam Warlock? or another character altogether that you're investing in? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, happy hunting and take care of one another.